Europe has been hot, like really, really hot. Temperature records have been broken across the continent. The UK saw its first ever readings above 40 degrees Celsius. And for context, the UK has some of the longest temperature records in the world. And before we get to the specifics, let's just be clear. This is a symptom of climate change. In fact, climate scientists have already calculated that the heat wave was made at least 10 times more likely because of climate change. And all of this already feels like old news because extreme heat is dominating across the world. Take the United States, where much of the entire country is suffering through extreme temperatures. Or China, where they've already had three heat waves this year alone. I want to talk about why on earth we're experiencing just so much extreme heat. But honestly, there's so much else I want to say. I don't know where to begin and I can't tell whether that's because there's so much to say or because my brain has melted in the heat. Should I talk about the thousands of deaths that were just shrugged off as if it's just another sunny day? This will be potentially lethal weather. I want us to be happy about the weather. I don't know whether something's happened to meteorologists to make you all a little bit fatalistic. Perhaps I should talk about the literal airline trying to capitalise on this catastrophe. Maybe I should mention all the knots that people have been tying themselves in to avoid engaging with the fact that this is a clear symptom of climate change. For example, saying, uh, the UK was also hot in 1976, even though the world's temperatures looked like this then and look like this now. Or there's the people saying, it's cold summer. As if when we saw an athlete smashing record after record after record in discipline after discipline after discipline, instead of realizing that they were obviously doping, we'd just say, it's cold being fit. Or maybe it's worth mentioning the well-meaning people saying climate change has arrived. As if more vulnerable people haven't been suffering its symptoms and speaking out for decades. And as if climate scientists haven't been warning us for over half a century. <coughs> but I don't want to talk about all that. Maybe because I'm too hot and bothered. I want to talk about why all this is happening in the first place. And now the basics are pretty straightforward. Heating the planet up means that extremely rare heat is now less rare, but more extreme. In fact, scientists have found that climate change is already making every heat wave more likely and more intense. But the thing is, heat waves aren't just becoming more likely, they're becoming way more likely. In fact, scientists find for certain heat waves that they've been made hundreds, even thousands of times more likely because of climate change. So why is global warming having such a mega impact on extreme heat? Well, changes in the Earth's average temperature have supersized effects on extremes, which raises the question, what does that actually mean? Well, let me tell you a true story. People here in Germany are taller on average than people back home in the UK. And as someone who's often been described as, I thought you'd be taller. I certainly noticed this when I moved here. I definitely noticed more people who were around six foot tall, but I also noticed quite a few people who were around six foot three, a height that would be pretty rare in the UK. What I really noticed though, was the super tall people. You know, they're those heights that are so tall that you basically never see anyone that tall. But then here in Germany, occasionally, I would see these people with heights that I had previously thought of as impossible. It's just the same with temperature. Shifting the average has effects on all events but by far the biggest impacts are on extremely tall, I mean extremely hot events, which go from being extremely rare, perhaps even virtually impossible, to actually happening. There are other effects too, which are driving up the extreme heat 
faster than you might expect. So far, the planet has warmed by an average of about 1 degree Celsius since the late 1800s. But time and time again, we're seeing extreme heat waves smash previous records by huge margins. A part of this is that that 1 degree Celsius of global warming isn't felt the same everywhere. In fact, land heats much faster than oceans because oceans take a lot more energy to heat up. That means that land, that's where people actually live, has on average heated much more than that 1 degree Celsius global average. Shifts in the motion of the Earth's atmosphere and ocean, as well as the dryness of soils, can also dial up the heat. So heat waves are heating up dramatically, even as the world has only, only heated by 1 degree Celsius. So when we're already experiencing so much extreme heat today, you can begin to understand why the world has agreed to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. And it's just one of the reasons why so many are so worried about the 3 degrees Celsius of global warming that we're currently heading towards. But we are not helpless. The world is, slowly, starting to get its act together, and pressure on politicians is translating into climate action. And we can take measures to protect ourselves, and most importantly, the most vulnerable people from extreme heat. Measures like better building insulation, changing working hours, and providing communal spaces to cool down. So if you've suffered through extreme heat this year, or if perhaps you're suffering through it right now, make sure that you take care. Take care to protect yourself and those around you, and take care so that we can stop the world from overheating in the years to come. So why are heat waves dangerous and why do they affect the most vulnerable people? Well, I've got a video all about that and while you're clicking on things, you can like, comment and subscribe so that the algorithm loves you. I mean, loves me. Okay, until next time. Bye. Cool. Perfect. Done. It's a wrap.